this video, we're going to look at linear equalities in two variables. A linear inequality in two variables is exactly like the equation of a line, except that the symbol is an inequality instead of an equal symbol. A linear equation in two variables might be something like 2x plus 3y equals 6. A linear inequality in two variables might be something like 2x plus 3y is less than 6. So very similar in format. If you have to rearrange a linear inequality in two variables, the same rules hold as with a linear inequality in one variable. In other words, almost everything's the same as an equation, except that if you multiply multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. Now, when we have linear equations, we like to get them into slope intercept form because that makes it really easy to sketch a line. And likewise, when we have linear inequalities, we also like it in this kind of slope intercept form where we isolate the y term. That also makes it relatively easy to graph. Let's start by solving an inequality for y and write it with the y on the left hand side if it's not already there. Let's look at 2x plus 5y is less than 10. We want to isolate the 5y term. So that means we need to move the 2x to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. I'll have 2x plus 5y minus 2x is less than 10 minus 2x. On the left hand side that leaves me with 5y and on the right hand side let me just write it the other direction. So right now it reads 10 minus 2x. I'm going to write it negative 2x plus 10 just so that the x term is first. It's a little bit closer to that y equals mx plus b form. I'm still trying to isolate the 5y, so the next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 5. I'm just going to take both sides over 5, which gives me 5y over 5 on the left, and negative 2x plus 10 all over 5 on the right, and that leaves me with y is less than, and then I can do some simplification here because I can write it as negative 2x over 5, that's negative 2 fifths x, and then that's plus 10 over 5, and 10 over 5 reduces to 2. So now I have y is less than negative 2 fifths x plus 2. I've solved the inequality for y and written it with the y on the left. At this point, I'd like you to pause and go ahead and try the second and third example. Negative y is greater than or equal to 3x plus 1, and 4x is less than or equal to 6 minus 2y. Pause this and give it a try. Okay, hopefully you've given that a try. Let's start with negative y is greater than or equal to 3x plus 1. Now the y term is isolated on the left hand side, but it's got that negative in front of it. So to remove the negative, we either need to multiply both sides by a negative or divide both sides by a negative, whichever sounds easier to you. And of course, we can't just do it by a negative. We actually need to do it by negative 1. So I'm just going to divide both sides by negative 1. So that's negative y over negative 1 and 3x plus 1 divided by negative 1. And hopefully when you divided by negative 1 or multiplied by negative 1, the bells and whistles went off and you were reminded that this greater than or equal to sign is going to have to reverse. Let's go ahead and do that. Reversing it. On the left, we'd have negative y over negative 1, which is just going to be positive y. That was the goal. And then negative 3x plus 1 all over negative 1. 3x over negative 1 is negative 3x. And then positive 1 over negative 1 is going to be minus 1. So y is less than or equal to negative 3x minus 1. In the third example, we have 4x is less than or equal to 6 minus 2y is where you got to be careful because you're trying to isolate the negative 2y term first. We have 6 minus 2y and we need to get rid of that positive 6. I'm going to start by subtracting by 6 on both sides. So we'll have 4x minus 6 is less than or equal to 6 minus 2y minus 6. So you can see I've subtracted 6 on both sides. On the left that leaves me with 4x minus 6 and on the right I have negative 2 y. All right, I'm still trying to isolate y. So I'm going to divide by negative 2, the coefficient of that y term. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And remember when we do that, the bells and whistles should go off. So I'm going to divide on the left by negative 2. That's 4x minus 6 all over negative 2. I'm going to divide on the right by negative 2. So that's negative 2y over negative 2. Right now it has a less than or equal to between it. And because I am dividing by a negative, I'm going to change that to a greater than or equal 
equal to. So in my next step, first I take 4x divided by negative 2, that's going to be negative 2x, and then negative 6 divided by negative 2, which is going to be a plus 3. So on the left we have negative 2x plus 3, on the right we have negative 2y over negative 2, so that's positive y. Again, don't re-reverse your signs, you already did it, you highlighted it, you know you're done. And then our last step was to rewrite the inequality with y on the left side, and right now we have it on the right side. If we were to read it from left to right, currently negative 2x plus 3 is greater than or equal to y, which means that y is the smaller side. So when I write it in reverse, I'm going to write y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. It helps to think about how you would read the inequality before you write it in the opposite way. Our final step here is to go ahead and graph a couple of these inequalities. Now we're going to jump over to Desmos and just take a look at how these come out. We're going to start with y is greater than negative 2x plus 1. To graph an inequality in Desmos, the inequality symbols are right on the main menu. There's a less than, a less than or equal to, a greater than or a greater than or equal to. Another option you have when you want less than or equal to is to simply type on your keyboard less than followed by equal to. If you want a greater than or equal to, just type greater than followed by equal to, and that will also work. In this case, when we view the line, we have a decreasing line with a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 2, and it's shaded to the right or the upper part of the graph. It's unshaded below the graph of that line. Now the reason we shade above it is that we want y values that are greater than this dashed line, and the reason that it's a dashed line is because we don't have greater than or equal to, we just have greater. When we go back to sketch this, we can sketch it almost like we're just sketching y equals negative 2x plus 1. We're going to start with a y-intercept of 1, and then we're going to use a rise over run of negative 2 over 1. So we're going to rise negative 2, meaning we're going to go down negative 2 units, and then go over to the right 1 unit, down 2 units, over to the right 1 unit, and then we'll draw a dashed line through those points, and then we want y values that are above this. If you think about just looking at the y-axis, the y-axis that's above the graph are the values like 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So we're going to be shading above this graph. Another way to look at that is that we're shading to the right of it. But since y values are up and down, I like to think of that as above and below the graph of this line. So we're shading to the above side or the right side of the line. Now let's look at y is less than or equal to t plus 2. And let's do this one in reverse. So first we're going to try to sketch the graph and then we'll go to desk most to check it. So if we think of this as a y equals mx plus b kind of graph, the y-intercept would be 2, and the slope is the number in front of t, which is just going to be 1, or 1 over 1. We start by plotting the y-intercept, and then we're going to rise 1, run 1. So rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1, and we can continue to do that. We have a less than or equal to, which means we're going to graph this with a solid line. Pull out my ruler to do a good job here. Solid line. And then which side do I shade? Well, I want y values that are less than or equal to this. So if I just think about the y-axis, I want the y-axis that's below this graph. So I'm going to shade everything below this graph. Let's go over to Desmos and see if we're right. Now Desmos is a little particular about inequalities and in that it doesn't like to graph inequalities with anything other than y or an x. So we need to actually change this. Instead of y is less than or equal to t plus 2, we're going to graph y is less than or equal to x plus 2. When we do that, we see a graph that has a y-intercept of 2. It's increasing with a slope of 1. It's a solid line and we have everything below the graph shaded in, which matches the graph that we drew. Now we drew this one with a less than or equal to. We can actually back up and see what it looks like if we just change it to be a less than. You can see that the graph turns out exactly the same except with a dashed line instead. And if we then type in equals after the less than, so that we type the less than symbol, then the equal symbol, it will just append the less than sign so that now it is a less than or equal to sign and we get the solid line. Let's just recap. When we're solving a linear inequality in two variables, it's just like solving a linear equation in two variables as as long as we remember that when we multiply or divide by a negative number, we've reversed that inequality symbol. And then when we graph one of these, we get it into that same slope-intercept form and first graph the line as either solid or dashed, depending on whether it's an equal sign or not. And then to determine which side to shade, think about shading the y-axis either less than your line or greater than your line to start with, and then shade the rest of that side.